Welcome to how to build your action task with Core.ai's Bot Builder. This video walks through the process of building an action task, including naming your task, connecting your API, adjusting settings, testing, and defining additional parameters. Hello and welcome back. In this video, let's build our first action task. So now I go back to the bot and click on new task and pick action. So let's call this action before we name this task, let's figure out what we're going to build here. Uh, for building action task and rest of this, we'll need some sample APIs to work with. So, so there's this wonderful little utility site called as JSON placeholder, and they have a bunch of sample little uh, APIs with um, RESTful APIs with JSON responses. So I'm just going to use this endpoint which is getting a list of blog post or a particular post with the id one so let's just use this url for this uh, for this um, action task and uh, let's say the objective here is to print out this title print out the title of a post okay so let's call this task as um, get post okay and the display name is get post. So one of the things that I did not mention earlier is uh, when we created the first dialog is that the name of the task is very important from the natural language processing point of view. Uh, we want the name, the task name to be as brief and uh, succinct as possible at the same time conveying the most amount or the, uh, the, the most amount of information that describes what that post, uh, what that action or what the task is right so in this case get post is pretty much descriptive of what this does and typically look for a kind of verb and a noun combination or a subject and an object uh, which explains the the purpose of this task right so get post will uh, clearly identify that the objective here is to get the post uh, the blog post information good so i created and i'm onto this screen uh, some general settings I could do. The connection type is already set as uh, RESTful. And I try to make an API request. We'll skip a lot of these details for now. And I'll say that I want to make a request. And I, I know the API endpoint. So I'll call it, the, I'll just give it a meaningful name here. Post endpoint. Or, and I'm going to do a get here. And this is the URL. Now this is a hard-coded URL where at the at the ID uh, is set to one, right? So I save this, and I select the content type as JSON. And there's there's no authorization, there's no authentication here, and I'm not passing any additional parameters at this moment. So I just click save, and I think another mandatory field I need to enter is that there is no authentication, no authorization for this endpoint. So this is a public endpoint. Um, we could create other authentication like basic auth and OAuth, which we'll see later. So I select none and save it. I think it's already saved. All right. Save it and I test the API endpoint by clicking this test button. And what's happening behind the scene is the platform uses that API endpoint, that URL, and hits the API, gets the response back, response back, and at least ensures that um, connectivity and rest of the things that you mentioned here is possible. And here it fetches the data back and puts it here in the sample response. So here you can see the request. There is no other request. There's a bunch of other things here, which we'll again see later. Uh, but we see that the response is put in this just uh, in the JSON box. It's a JSON object in the with the key response, key value of uh, the key name of response. Okay, and we'll use this information for printing back the response back to the user. So if I just take pause for a moment here, what I've done done here in the API request tab, I have identified the endpoint that I'm going to hit. I hit the endpoint. I ensure that the platform and that I put in uh, all the configurations necessary, uh, that I identify the authentication that's needed, and I'm getting some sample response back. 
and go to the bot response tab. So here I will craft the response that uh, that needs to be sent back to the user, right? Uh, again, I can do it one of two ways. So we have the standard text, which is a um, sort of a markdown um, based uh, text that I can generate here, and I can um, <coughs> uh, template uh, the code using lowdown syntax uh, to for replacement uh, values or I can uh, write plain old JavaScript code. So let's say the, the variable I want to have is from the response and the value I'm looking for interested is title. Okay. So I'm just going to say title here is this. Okay. So I'll hit save and then finish the setup and let's test it out. So again, the name of the action in this case was get post. So I'll just invoke it by the name of the action. Now it's confirming, it's uh, asking me for confirmation. This is what it, uh, here is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to execute this action. Can you confirm? I'll say yes. And it returns back with the title. So the exact same title that we saw here in the API endpoint is returned back uh in this format that we just defined let's make a couple more tweaks to this hey i don't like that confirmation message so let's get rid of this confirmation message so i go to advanced settings and i skip the confirmation and in the bot response let's say let's we let's try to do this using javascript so the way to do this would be I will use a print command and I will just change the text here that the title is and one stop response of title and one of the neat things about this is I can also preview it right I can preview with uh, with the sample response. So that I can actually test it here and see that this is indeed what I'm going to see, right? So now I try this again. So now in this case, the response is generated by the JavaScript code instead of the um, freeform markdown with, uh, with templating. There we go. So that's the response back from the server. Now, let's make one more change here to ma uh, make this a little dynamic so remember we hard coded the request id here as one right so let's make it dynamic and uh, let's make sure that we prompt the user to enter the um, post id So what I'm going to do here is add a parameter, right? So I click on parameters and I create a parameter and it's the query parameter that I want to make dynamic. So I select query parameter and let's call it post ID. Post ID. And let's have a uh, prompt name. What is the post ID? Okay, and I give it the key name, which is more of like a variable name. And I say, let's say the post ID is a string. And now at this point, again, we haven't done anything for conversation, right? So assume you're building a form, a UI form, right? So if it had it been a UI form, this would have been a text box. So I pick text box and let's say add an exit here. So let's fix this. It should be post ID. And now let's fix the endpoint here and make it dynamic. So here, now I am going to put again a replacement parameter. So instead of the post ID being hard coded here, it's going to be dynamic. And I can now test it and verify it. So now it's asking me for post ID. And I'll, let's say post ID 2. it fetches it let's see what the data we're gonna expecting for post ID 2 that's the data and 
indeed that's the data that we get here in the sample which is by default saved here and no changes here right so now let's try this out again get post oops it did not ask me prompt me for the post title let's make sure i have everything here let's see what happened here let's go back to the refresh parameters okay let's look in the advanced settings we uh the post id was not a mandatory field so let's make it mandatory let's make sure that it's always prompted for and then exit it here and let's again finish the setup let's try this again get post okay so now the uh, the bot is prompting me to enter the post id right it says me what is the post id so i'll say post id is two the title is this right now let's try this again you can also you also notice that we have the option of entering the data through a form right so let's put three so by the fact that we build a parameter and by configuring it with all the uh, types and the you know, display type the the framework knows that you are expecting a string right so it can prompt uh, with either as a conversation or uh, for more complex data entry scenarios we can just uh, relegate to a form based ui to enter the data so this is uh, our first action task